Psychology of the Zombie Apocalypse. In this video, I'd like to explore the phenomenon of the zombie apocalypse from a psychological perspective, especially with regard to its place within the larger Western cultural matrix we're inhabiting. However, I should probably state at the outset of this video that it won't contain much plotting reportage of empirical research results, but will consist mostly of my own freewheeling observations and conjectures. So, as with all things in this world, take it with a grain of salt. Anyhow, to get started, I'd first like to advance a fairly obvious thesis that in today's world, the zombie apocalypse with its legions of diseased and blighted souls hovering somewhere between life and death, shambling in their hordes through the broken remnants of our cities and towns, has become the subject of endless fascination and entertainment for us. So much so that it's now become pretty much a fixture in our movies, television programs, and video games, as well as in popular culture more generally. So, from a psychological perspective, the obvious first question is, what's going on here? What is our fascination with the zombie apocalypse expressing about ourselves, our desires, our anxieties, and our world? However, before getting into all that, it's probably a good idea to take a couple of minutes to put the zombie apocalypse into historical perspective. Eschatology, which has to do with narratives and speculation about the end of the world, has certainly been a recurrently captivating theme throughout most of recorded history. Wikipedia, for instance, lists 174 specific major religious predictions of apocalyptic cataclysm made during the period extending from Roman times to today. From this broad historical perspective, the zombie apocalypse is simply the latest incarnation of a more general eschatological thematic that has enthralled humanity throughout most of recorded history. However, in our own age, a fairly sizable fraction of eschatological narrative revolves around the zombie. So let's take a brief look at the evolution of the zombie, especially over the last half century. The zombie originally came to us by way of Haitian voodoo folklore, where it was depicted as a corpse reanimated by voodoo magic and controlled by a practitioner as a kind of undead slave. For instance, the very first portrayal of zombies in film followed this formula, beginning in 1932 with the very first zombie film, White Zombie. However, the zombie as we know it today has its roots in a more epidemiological narrative. For instance, this more recent theme is reflected in the trilogy of film adaptations of Richard Matheson's 1954 novel, I Am Legend. These three films were produced in 1964, 1971, and 2007, and were entitled The Last Man on Earth, The Omega Man, and I Am Legend, respectively. Here we see the zombie's origin move away from reanimation via voodoo magic and toward metamorphosis by pandemic disease. Along with this shift, these films also introduced the eschatological element into the zombie narrative, where zombies were no longer individual slaves controlled by a malevolent master, but uncontrolled, mindless hordes whose indiscriminate violence portends the end of the human race. However, probably the single greatest watershed moment in the modern evolution of the zombie occurred with the 1968 release of The Night of the Living Dead, which, along with its sequels, pretty much introduced the zombie as we currently know it. Here we see the familiar shambling gait, as well as the element of cannibalism and contagion through biting, for instance. However, as the evolving narrative of the zombie was moving away from voodoo magic and toward disease, it also began incorporating a distinctly technological element. For instance, in the Omega Man, the disease that produced the zombie plague was brought about by technologically sophisticated germ warfare. In I Am Legend, it was the result of a misguided cure for cancer. In The Night of the Living Dead, it was produced by radiation that resulted from a failed space mission to Venus. And here, I believe, is one of the first real clues to understanding the psychology of the zombie apocalypse. Part of it has to do with our ambivalence about the increasingly technological and bureaucratic world we've created, as well as about where that world is heading. Against the dreary backdrop of our world's daunting complexities, its weightiness, and its endless niggling frustrations, the phantasmagoria of the zombie apocalypse offers us a vision of ultimate simplicity, a world where only survival matters. And this vision is alluring to us mostly because, underneath it all, we feel a kind of alienation, 
an estrangement from what's primal about human existence, and especially an estrangement from the primitive atavistic thrill of feeling life and death teetering in an uncertain struggle for survival. We revel in the zombie apocalypse because part of us still longs to feel that kind of animalistic simplicity again. It's because, while we recognize our modern world's obvious boons and benefits, part of us feels enslaved by it, like we've somehow become too docile and obedient, too inured to the prosaic mechanical demands of a bureaucratic technological world, too encumbered and debilitated by always having to think and say only the most inoffensive, agreeable, pusillanimous thing. And against that unremittingly dismal backdrop, part of us just wants to explode, if only by way of fantasy. Consequently, the zombie apocalypse is fascinating to us because it represents one side of the interregnum we're inhabiting, an interregnum between two shifting paradigms for human evolution. The emerging meme-driven paradigm, with its emphasis on complex symbol manipulation, and the older gene-driven model, whose stark simplicity resides in the survival of the fittest. And because we're caught in the tension between these shifting paradigms, part of us still pines nostalgically for the brutal simplicity of that older way of life, even as we enjoy the fruits and benefits of living in a meme-driven technological world. So, on one hand, it seems that part of the allure of the zombie apocalypse has to do with seeking a sense of psychological refuge from the drab predictability and tedium of our bureaucratic technological world, as well as respite from feeling alienated from the primal side of life. However, it also seems to me that the psychology of the zombie apocalypse includes an undercurrent of anxiety brought about by the fact that a modern apocalypse is now a technologically plausible reality rather than just an extravagant, implausible fable. Basically, for around the last half century, significantly the same approximate time frame as the evolution of the zombie apocalypse, we've been living in a world where technologically wrought Armageddon can happen at any point. It might be by way of the old-school specter of nuclear warfare or germ warfare, or it might happen by some sort of catastrophic economic or environmental collapse. In any case, our technological world has decreased the psychological distance between the threat of apocalypse and ourselves. This new, threatening sense of proximity is, for instance, part of what has given birth to today's prepper movement. What's significant about the prepper movement is that it's a sign that the apocalypse is no longer limited solely to the domain of literature, fantasy, and entertainment, but is beginning to infiltrate people's everyday perceptual fields and practices. Prepping is significant because it's an indicator that people are starting to feel the fabric of our lives, beginning to fray and unwind, ultimately in some kind of apocalyptic way. But let's turn our attention back to the zombie specifically. The question is, why is the zombie so often the vehicle for our apocalyptic fantasies rather than some other kind of antagonist? I think that the answer is that the zombie presents us with a perfectly morally unobjectionable enemy. Because the zombie is effectively already dead, it allows us to feel the visceral thrill of the whole spectacle of blood without all of the weighty moralistic baggage associated with extinguishing actual human life. Of course, the motif of battling machines, as in the case of the Terminator and Matrix films, often serves this same function. But I suspect that the primal, repressed part of us isn't entirely satisfied with that. Part of the charm of the zombie is that it presents us with the best of both worlds, an antagonist that's not really alive as such, but not an inanimate object either. Consequently, the zombie allows us to feel the thrill of unfettered violence without having to confront all of the moralistic compunctions and quandaries we might otherwise experience. The zombie is essentially a morally safe and yet viscerally satisfying enemy. But, of course, as with so many of our supposed enemies, the zombie turns out to be little more than an inverted reflection of ourselves and especially the part of ourselves we have difficulty facing and accepting. I suspect that we're attracted to the spectacle of the zombie apocalypse, partly because it represents what our world already feels like to us a lot of the time, as well as how we ourselves feel. In other words, we fixate on the zombie 
not because the zombie represents the anti-human or the non-human, but rather the all-too-human. And isn't it true that underneath it all, we know all too well what it's like to feel half dead and half alive, to be suspended somewhere between a shuffling somnambulism and a genuine engagement with life. The fact is that we know only too intimately what it is to dwell in a world ruled by mindless zombie-like conformity, by senselessness and brutality, to be always ravenously searching for brains and finding none. And isn't it true that in the final analysis, we ourselves are the ones who don't really know whether we're fully alive or not? Or more accurately, we know it only partially, only factually, not as something we actually feel surging undeniably through our veins like a torrent, moment by moment, like the river of lifeblood that sustains us. So, in a way, the real psychological meaning of the zombie apocalypse is about coming home, home to where we've been all along. It's about recognizing our own zombie nature, as well as our participation in an apocalyptic world of our own creation. So, to all of you preppers and zombie aficionados across the land, I say unto thee, you can stop worrying and stop fortifying your bunkers. It turns out that the zombie apocalypse has already happened. It's already in our malls and streets, already in our workplaces and living rooms, already on TV and on social media, already in our schools and churches and government too. And you and I, well, you and I have already been infected (laughs) and are already starting to shuffle, dazed and slack-jawed toward our next appointment, our next shopping trip, our next vacation. And if all of this seems like hyperbolic overreach to you, well... Just take a look around, and I think you'll discover that the zombie apocalypse is really where you've been all along. Have a nice day.